Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper here with Plugin Boutique and welcome to the second video in the three-part video series we're doing for the Drum Synth 500 by Air Music Technology. This video is going to be a very brief but fairly in-depth overview of exactly what's going on with the Drum Synth 500. And I'm gonna keep it as brief as possible because I really wanna get into the next video where we actually go ahead and start creating our own drum kits and our own MIDI files. So what I'm gonna do is start at the top and then kind of work through each one of these different synth style sections and then break down the master channel over here on the far right. The cool thing about the Drum Synth 500 is everything you have available is visible right now. There are no hidden panels or anything like that, something you need to flip out, flip down, whatever. It's all right here, easy to use, so you can get results very quickly. So starting up here at the top, this is the default drum kits. I believe there are 50 of them, and they're all labeled very helpfully. It gives you kind of a feel for what it is. For example, I'm on 8-bit kit, and not only do you get these drum kit presets, but you also get these MIDI files over here. You see the Drum Synth 500 MIDI, and there are 500 MIDI files in here. So what you want to do is just take 8-bit kit, for example. Let's try a different one. Drag it on here. You'll see that it's labeled 130, so I just changed my BPM here to 130. I'm on the 8-bit kit already, so now I just trigger this MIDI file. And you see that I've already got a really nice idea to start with. Obviously, that's a jumping off point. You can do whatever you want. Uh, you don't need to necessarily use the MIDI file with the drum kit. For example, if I just switch the drum kit here and go ahead and trigger that file again. You know, it's, it's going to work that way too. You're just going to get a different thing. Combining the MIDI file with the drum kit name is going to give you the intended feel of that particular MIDI file. But I, you know, you don't need to stick to that format, obviously. So next up, we've got four different sections. We've got a kick snare section, and this section has analog style oscillators. Obviously it's not analog, it's digital, but they're trying to emulate analog style oscillations. The next one is the clap and the hats over here, and these ones use noise oscillators to create those sounds. The next one is toms and percussion, which uses FM synthesis with two operators. And then the sampler sections, you can really load up any kind of samples, if I come in here to, uh, you see we got bass, we've got percussion, we've got stabs, sweeps, and synth sounds. So really anything can be loaded up in here, not necessarily just drums. And you've got two of those that can be played at any given time. Now there's something else that's pretty cool that I wanna draw your attention to, is that you'll see up here that we can actually change what MIDI note triggers what section. So here on C1 will trigger my kick, but if I click right here, I can actually change which MIDI note that is. I can also preview any one of these by clicking up here at the top. And if we keep going here, you see that hats actually has two MIDI, and that's because one is a closed hat, one is an open hat. And then toms has a note range, and that's because we can actually pitch the toms between these notes. So if I come in here, I'm at B1 up to D2, I can actually pitch my toms in that range. And that's the same thing with percussion and the two slam sampler patches. Now, it's not necessarily going to be a D sharp 2 when we trigger that sampler, but we do have the ability to pitch whatever the original pitch is up or down in between these note ranges, which again, we can set by just clicking and choosing outside of this menu. So moving down, we have all of the presets, and there is a huge number of presets for each one of the elements here. You can see that we have who knows how many kicks, but it's a lot. Snares, same amount. Claps almost, uh, that actually might be more. Um, and just so on, that's how you find the actual samples here. You can see for the toms, we actually have percussion and toms here. Same thing here. And another thing that's really cool is if you just hit this little cube right here, this is a die, it will actually randomize the settings inside of the synth. So it will give you a different feel. So if I go ahead and solo this kick for a second. Let me actually come in and let's loop this so it doesn't give us that little section. Let's loop it at two. So even that, just hitting that is always going to give you a new result, an interesting result very quickly. And that works the same way with everything. It's going to manipulate the parameters inside. And another thing I want to point out, I told you that there are four different styles of synthesizer inside of this or sampler playback here at the end. 
Each of these has its own set of parameters and they're different. They're also color coded, which makes navigating the Drum Synth 500 very simple. So for the kick and the snare, we've got our amp envelope settings. We've got our pitch envelope settings. We also have for the kick, the click, noise, and drive for that kind of punchy transient part. And then we have the body section, the snare section, and then a filtering system down here for the snare section. So each one of those, you kind of kind of pay attention because it's going to be different. If I tweak right here, I'm tweaking the diode filter as opposed to if I do it right here, I'm actually tweaking uh, the low end EQ for this clap. Right here for FM synthesis, we can turn on the second operator to affect the first operator. I don't have time to go into FM synthesis, but just know that if you do this, you're gonna be getting a different sound. And then below each one of these, you have three different distortion types. We can turn them on or turn them off. When it's blue, it's activated. And this amount knob will coincide to whichever one of these names is highlighted. So if I turn the distortion up here and then click on bit crush, you'll see that the knob has moved to coincide to where I've left that value for the bit crushing. It's not on yet, but if I turned it on, it'd be like that. We also have a filters here where we can choose the filter type, and then we have the cutoff resonance values here. And then we have two styles of compression per channel, and then we have the compression amount right here. And another helpful thing too, if you want to know exact values while I'm moving this, if you look up here in the top right of the plugin, you'll actually see it says kick compression amount, and it's moving up and down while I'm moving the knob. And then below that, again, we have another trigger if you don't wanna go all the way up to the top of the synth, very helpful. We have mute and solo options. We have panning and volume, and then we have two reverbs and two delays. So if we jump over here, these are send effects, and those send effects are located over here. We've got two independent reverbs. They're both convolution reverbs. One has sort of a smaller feel to it, and the other one is sort of a larger feel. And you have your reverb setting amounts as well. You can turn them on or turn them off. These are the impulse responses we have for both. All right, you can see this one has generally larger sounds or larger spaces. And then we have two independent delays as well. We do have a filter for the first one and we can turn those on or turn those off as well. And if we want any one of these sounds to be sent there, we just gotta use the send knobs on the specific channel we want sent over there. There are, is also an insert effect over here. We've got three different types of saturation to choose from, a dry and mix knob and off on control as well. And then at the bottom, we have panning, volume, and then a kill EQ. So if I go ahead and unsolo this and play the track, if I click and hold low, it's gonna cut the low frequency. But as soon as I let go, it's actually gonna come back in. And that's helpful for performances. So it's kind of like a DJ kill EQ on your mixer. And then we have compression with the threshold, ratio, attack, and release times. So it's a really well thought out product that delivers incredible results. So I think playing a few more of these presets might be in order here. Let's check out body music. Again, we don't need to, but maybe change the BPM to whatever the MIDI clip says. So for example, here 118, come in and go to body music. Go ahead and trigger it. So there are a couple things I want to point out too. Um, you can see that bottom music has one A, one B, one C. So this is kind of like a track, different sections of that track. So that's how those are laid out. And also here we can hear the different pitching going on. If I come in here. So this one actually has pitched bongo sounds. And if I wanna check out, so you can see Bottom Music actually has three different song starters essentially. Come in, change this to 130. <laughs> Very cool. So let me open up the drum synth again so we can see it. And let's check out a couple more. Let's check out circuits, 123. Come in here. So 
So I really like what they've done here. Adding the two samplers here is a nice touch. So we don't necessarily need to have just drums inside of a drum synth 500, inside of the drum synth 500. We can have synths, we can have bass. And in fact, you can tweak these settings for the toms and the percussion to make it sound like a bass line anyway. But then using the samplers obviously is a nice touch. You can almost get a full outline of a track right inside of the drum synth easily enough. So anyway, as I said, a brief overview of the Drum Synth 500. In the next video, we're gonna go ahead and create our own drum kits, our own MIDI file, and you know, just essentially start a track together. So I'm Joshua Casper here for Plug and Boutique, and I'll see you in that next video. <laughs>